How long were you in prison? 18 months. That's yes. a long time. A lot of successful women, they struggle dating for some reason. I see articles about this. Have you experienced that? You know I have. <laughs> <laughs> Could you date a guy that made less than you though? Yes, but it has to be like mid six figures. Can you really teach people how to make 100K in 90 days? Have yeah. you done that? Of course, have I? I didn't, <laughs> what? I didn't that's, make. That's a lot of money. Two Welcome back to the Digital Social Hour. I'm your host, Sean Kelly. Here with a great guest for you guys today, Annetta Powell. Yes, me. <laughs> How's it going? I'm doing amazing. Okay. You seem like you're in a good mood. You just fly in? Just positive energy all the time. No negativity. Uh, no, uh -uh, that's low vibration. Yeah, you block all the shit out, right? Yeah, you already know. Yeah, it's tough though when you grow up in certain environments. It is, that's why, you know, when you get older, that's why you gotta learn personal development. Mm. So how did you start going down that path of personal development? You know, when the real estate market crashed, I was looking for um, another stream of income. And you know, I learned network marketing. And when I was in network marketing, they teach you a lot of personal development. Mm. And so I really studied that and um, it really helped me with my mindset. Yeah. So with this real estate economy looking weird, like it might, I don't know if it's gonna crash, but do you have a plan if it does? Well, of course, because <laughs> guess what? It'll be a buyer's market. Mm. So that means that the prices go down really low and then I can buy, right? And yeah. so I'll have a bigger portfolio. Okay, so you're gonna stack up. Oh, all day long, without a doubt. When the 08 crash happened, where were you at with that? When 2008 crashed, I was in real estate investing, but I was flipping houses. Mm. So when the actual houses flipped, you know, when I were flipping the actual houses, the real estate crashed, my money crashed. Mm. At that time, I didn't understand how important passive income was. Yeah. And so at that time, I took all my money and I invested it into houses. They were really cheap back in Detroit, like two, three thousand, four thousand dollars. But I looked up, I had no money. Mm. So um, now I know what a crash is. So I'm waiting for the actual crash because then it'll be what a buyer's market. Mm. So, so I'm prepared and I got some money now. Okay. So you're just stacking up, getting ready for the for the crash. Getting ready for whatever. Absolutely. Yeah. You think there'll be a, a crash as bad as 08? You know what? The banks are getting really smart. Uh, banks are literally like buying their houses and fixing them and holding on to them. Mm. So I don't I don't think that the market will be lucrative, but I know they'll probably put some um, houses out there. But banks are familiar. They already know how to you know, gut them out and resell them, fix them up. They kind of do that as well. So, yeah. you know, it's going to be kind of tricky because they up on, you know, what we do. Mm. Yeah, they learned from that 08 crash. That one was brutal. Yes. Um, is real estate how you made your first million? Yes, real estate is how I made my first million, finding, fixing, and flipping properties. I was actually a uh, materials coordinator, right? Mm. And my dream, what I wanted to do in life is I wanted to actually – uh, be a corporate, like this corporate lady, a director. But when I was working at Johnson Controls making $40,000 a year, mm. I realized that you could never become a millionaire working for somebody else. Mm. So that's when I diversified and I met a guy and he was saying, if I could show you how to make a million dollars, what would you do? I said, I'll give you half. So make a <laughs> I did. So make a long story short, uh, he ended up showing me how to do it, but he was doing it the fraudulent way. Like uh. literally back then they didn't have technology so you literally can take one house and sell it like five different times what? and by the time yeah and by the time the bank catch up you know they got all these links it's done Jeez. but now the technology immediately they'll know if the house has been sold wow so where'd yeah. he end up uh i don't even know because <laughs> i was like i can't you know i just kind of like disappear because that's something that i didn't want to partake in yeah what were you like growing up? Were you like really different from everyone around you or? Definitely. Like, well, I used to be this bad kid. I used to want to fit in mm. when I was growing up work. Um, you know, like we had like this little, it wasn't a real game, not no bloods and crypt stuff, but I thought it was <laughs> because I wanted to fit in. And then as I grew up, I knew I wanted to be independent and I knew, you know, like I'll never forget, like I was kind of confused. I wanted to go to college, but I did want to go to college. Mm. So I ended up working at uh, EDS 
And yes. so when I start, yeah, it's Put like all this automotive stuff okay. within the Detroit, Michigan area. And I was working at EDS and um, I just was like, I got to do something different. So what happened was um, after I left EDS, right, that's when I got into real estate. So, and I realized that, you know, once I realized that you could never become a millionaire, that's when I start, you know, thinking about entrepreneurship. Mm. And once you made that money, how much did your life change from there? How much my life changed? Yeah. It was like, <laughs> you know, how about when I made my first, when I made my first 10,000? Okay. okay. It changed <laughs> I'll never forget. Girl. No, I was a hustler. So my first hustle, do you know where New York is? Yeah, I'm from Can Jersey. Okay. Canal Street, yeah. all that fake stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, I used to literally, my dad used to work at actual General Motors. Okay. And we could fly in like to New York, like anywhere for $19. So I, right. So I literally would jump for, on a plane, go on Canal Street, my first thousand dollars. I turned it into like 10,000, bringing actual, like, you know, uh, knockoff purses back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you remember the iceberg sweaters? No. Okay. Well, they got, you know, the Gucci fake sweaters and yeah, everything. I, know those. I brought that back and that's how I made my first 10,000. So, okay. So I never oh, I was rich back then. I thought I was, <laughs> but you know, that was like, I was excited yeah, yeah. when I made my first 10,000. But what I have realized in life is if you can make 10, you can make a hundred thousand, you can make a million dollars. Mm. It's just, you know, strategically learning how to do it. Levels. Yeah. And a lot of successful women, they struggle dating for some reason. I see articles about this. Have you experienced that? You know, I have, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? This is my take. Okay. And I don't know, you might, you might disagree, but I believe that successful women, we have standards, yeah. right? Like you can't, you know, do anything with us. And so I think men nowadays, women have made it easy for them. Like, it's like, you got to put in work. You got to date me, you got to court me or whatever the case may be. But you have another woman that literally is okay with, you know, a man, like, like I'll give you a prime example. If you tell me we going on a date at eight o'clock, right? Yeah. Okay. You need to call we you we need to go on a date or call me at 7 30 or 7 and say hey we're not, i'm not going to be able to make it mm. don't call me at 9 30 10 o'clock time oh my bad mm. we're not doing it right so to me like i feel like if a man interested he is definitely going to be on point when it comes to a woman um that he likes this is what i believe i always tell women there's two things a man gonna do if he really likes you either he either going to step it up if you have standards or what or he gonna you know, go away. It's, hmm. it's, you know, it's either or. Interesting. It doesn't sound like you're asking a lot. Just show up on time. Like, right. I don't get why right. there's issues. I don't know. Like you got to think like my last, it was so funny because um, I was thinking that me and my last ex-boyfriend, we were going to be start dating. And then it was like, he wanted to pursue me, but then he was like, oh, you know, uh, I didn't know. I'm thinking that like we were going to date exclusively. I'm thinking yeah. we reunite and and he said, oh, no, I want to date. We're going to date other people. And I'm like, no, not me. I'm uh, not going to partake in open that. Open relationship. Right. But a woman, see, we have our own, you know, money. But hold up. We still have to humble ourselves because it's all about how you make a man feel. Do mm. you agree with me? I like to feel good. In a exactly. Yeah, you yeah. can't have an independent woman, you know, like really like, you know, like not saying affirmations, you know, not building them up, not right. making him feel good. No, you it's know? super important. Your partner's exactly. got to Exactly. So it's all about how you make a man feel. Yeah. And I Which, think that's very important. And a lot of women, men don't like women that just, you know, they like talk crazy, you know? Do yeah. you, right. No, don't know how no. Exactly. No, they need to be positive. <laughs> right. Um, could you date a guy that made less than you, though? Yes, but it has to be like mid six figures. Hmm. Okay. I like nice so stuff. So there's a there's a base. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So 500k a year is your base. Basically. I can work with that. Okay. Right. Yeah. That's that's a good amount. It's nothing crazy, but actually no, it's pretty high. It's top one percent. Well, let me get the one percent. <laughs> yeah. I mean, not a lot of guys make it, but I guess you're making a lot, so it's easier to, to find those people. Right. Too. I, I can't build a man up. I ain't doing a build a bear up, build a man up. He got to <laughs> come with something to the table. Yeah. So you've met some crazy people. Let's go through these. You met Oprah. What did you learn from her? Oprah, I learned from her. She said that in life, you only need two or three people. And mm. that's true to actually grow with you and build with you. And I really believe that. Like a lot of times people think they need a big entourage, 
but you just need two or three friends like me. And I took that and that's what I have. I have two to three friends hmm. that I actually have built with, developed a great relationship. And, um, you know, we've inspired each other to be the best version of who we want to be nice. while we own the universe. That's cool. Yeah. She keeps her circle tight. I noticed. Well, yeah. <laughs> I never knew why, but she probably, yeah, people probably tried using her and she just keeps it tight now, you know? Yes. What about uh, Michelle Obama? Moshe Michelle Obama was more of a, like, meet and greet. Okay. So I really, um, she just really talked about, you know, this, watching what you do. Like she was saying, like, you know, when she was in the White House, she was like, they would have to watch what they do, mm. you know, because they were in the White House. Like, is you can't do anything. People always watch you, and I feel like, even when you are a social media, when you have influence on social media, you gotta watch what you do. You know, you can't, you know, be out there doing all these different crazy things. Like I give you a prime example. Like some women like have different types of men on their social media. Like that's <laughs> not like you won't find one on my social media. I'm very private. Mm. You know, we don't talk about how to make some money. I'm gonna talk about inspire you. But as far as coming into my personal life. I don't think that need to be disclosed on social media. Interesting. Yeah, I noticed that about you when I was going on your IG. No <laughs> guys at all, which is, yeah, not a lot of girls do I that. I can't be looking like a 304, okay? <laughs> uh, what about Rick Ross? Rick Ross was really cool. You know what? He is a great entrepreneur. Mm. Like, literally, uh, he has a lot going on. And um, his mindset, like, he believes in, like, he has this thing called, uh, what is it? I can't remember, but he also have like a, a conference that he does at his house boss up i think that's what it is and literally people come and talk about their business ideas and things like that and when mm. i was talking to him he was just saying because i asked him about wing stop and he was like it's great he was like but at the end of the day when you learn how to make more money you know with different businesses you kind of move to a different level you mm. know so um he, he you know people probably look at him as a rapper but he has really diversified what he got a private jet now i yeah. mean he's making some moves man he's and a yeah. lot of rappers go broke but he seems to have gone the other way and you know what i liked about him in his contract right he actually was only supposed to talk but he actually you know rapped and you know did a couple songs which i loved nice yeah i like yes. that about him uh, i saw you got in the tax industry i'd like to learn more about that i've never met someone in that industry the tax game yeah. oh my god i love it uh, in the tax industry, you know, a lot of people, it has really transitioned people's life. Like, people really don't understand it. Like, I know you know 10 people, right, yeah. that has earned income. Mm -hmm. And so let's just say, for example, if you're charging $400 or 500 that's 10 people, that's like 5000 And it's like, you can build up and make money in such a short span. Like, you know, 100000 in 90 days, a million. It's all about what type of work ethic you can put in. I always tell people in the tax game, you can go to zero to a hundred real quick mm. wait so how does it work like how do you make money off the tax oh so usually you're dealing with people of low income because usually low you know the tax actual uh system is really set up for low income to mid-income people yeah so usually they receive a refund okay so when you file their taxes let's just say you have somebody that makes 16 17 thousand with three children usually they're going to re receive anywhere from six to eight or nine thousand like oh, there's okay. low income so what happens is your actual fee is deducted from their actual refund amount Got and it. you receive it the very next day once cool. you they receive their check yeah so it's similar to employee retention credit have you seen that one yeah I have. erc yeah yeah i did that for a bit wow i didn't know uh people got refunds like that though right <laughs> a lot. i didn't know either <laughs> Can you really teach people how to make 100K in 90 days? Have you done that? Of course. Have I? I didn't, <laughs> what? I didn't that's, make that's a lot of money in 90 days. 90 days. You know, and being in the tax industry is not because you got to think. If you have 100 people, you charge them $500. What is that? That's what? 5000 or 50000 50000 50000 You 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 market to 200 people. If you put out 20000 flyers and only 1% of people come and file their taxes with you, how much money is that? I can't even do the math. That's a hundred thousand. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's not just really like, you know, putting the content out, putting the pieces of uh, material that you need to drive those people. And mm. I'm sure you already know people that has earned income, right? It's not hard. You could really run up a bag. Yeah, you can. 
So how are you getting people? Are you just going like door to door? Like, how are you getting thousands of people? I mean, you know, we do, you know, marketing, flyers, door hangers. You know, it's a whole bunch of different ways that you can do actually, um, you know, obtain people to actually prepare their taxes. Nice. What are the I things? was actually at a conference. Oh, yeah? I just left. Yes. Which one? Uh, the Latino. Latino? What's up? It's an actual tax conference. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's the good thing about Vegas. There's so many here. I can't even keep up with it. <laughs> right. And I see you going to a bunch of them, speaking at them. How did you get started with that? With speaking? Yeah. You know what? A lot of times um, people like to hear my story. And, you know, a lot of times when you're successful and you can inspire people, people always, you know, reach out to me, ask me, hey, can you speak at this event? Nice. Can you speak at that event? I just have to make sure the event is going to be a win-win situation. Right. Because, you know, you can speak at some events and you could be running a nonprofit organization mm. and I don't want to run a nonprofit organization. You don't want to get in charity? <laughs> <laughs> no, I do have a 501c3 with my dad, though. Okay. What's that about? My parents, my mother and father, they are deaf. They cannot hear or talk. Oh. So pretty much we give back to the deaf community. And I went to prison. I went to federal prison. And so what I realized when I went to federal prison was I remember seeing, you know, being at the halfway house and it was so many women coming home from doing five, 10 years, they didn't have anything. Hmm. And so now every year around Christmas time, I actually sponsor their Christmas parties and I give gift certificates as well as I give my actual clothes to the actual halfway house to help women you know, actually um, get a fresh start. Wow, that's crazy. How long were you in prison? 15 months. That's yes. a long time. Were you freaking <laughs> right. out in there? Like, what was that like? Uh, prison pretty much was like, you know, one thing I could say is um, when I actually had to go to prison, I was like, okay, I got to go to prison. So I put a plan together. So what I did was I wrote myself a hundred books. I mean, I typed up a hundred books and the day I had to turn myself in, I had a driver. We went to the mail, but I went to the post office, mailed my list to me, and I went in. And so um, I read, I worked out, you know, got my mind spiritually together. Mm. And you know, you know, people say the saying like, when you go to prison, you sit down. You really do sit down. Right. Like you got to really figure it out. Like, and during that time, I really took some time to develop me. And so when I got home. Um, I did like, you know, 800,000. I always, I was stuck there in the tax industry. So when I got home, I finally did over a million dollars tax industry back in 17. Wait, you typed up a hundred books? Yes. A hundred books. Can't you just print it out though? I'm confused. You typed up. No, I typed it up because you know, like in there, I can't go to, you know, Google and look up a yeah. good book or I can't go to Amazon. So okay. what I did was I Googled all the books that I desired to read yeah. while I was incarcerated. So I typed the list up and then I mailed it to myself. Oh, the list up. Okay. Yeah, the list up. I thought you meant you typed up the whole book. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. So what I would do is I would call my friend or my family and I would say, okay, now send these five books. And so they would send them in and I would read them. Wow. You getting any prison fights? Uh uh, no. you know, not listen. Y'all gonna you gonna laugh at me, but I had this friend and um, she was getting to it. And I told her, listen, if you get into a fight here, you're gonna be fighting by yourself because I want to go home. Mm. Like literally, if you fight in prison, <laughs> uh, you know they'll lock you up, take you to a different campus. Like yeah. I ain't got your back in prison. I'm trying to get out <laughs> yeah. on my due date. Okay? okay, like having that date to go home is like a dream. Yeah, and it's like they give you a date to go in, and then you have to request a date to go out. Oh, you don't even get a date to no, go out uh -uh. i thought you know how much time you get no you do but you have to request to, uh you have to request at the half like they have to send a request to have you you know go to the halfway house mm. so if that date is not available they may give you another date they have to have room wow in the federal system for you to even go home and make room for you yeah and is it true it's like divided by race in there no. Oh, no? No, it's diversified. Like, I was at a camp. So, literally, you know one thing? When I went to federal prison, when I got sentenced, I never had any handcuffs on me. Really? Literally, I got sentenced, went downstairs. They fingerprinted me. I got out. Um, you know, the feds is like some gangsters, okay? So, after that, <laughs> I'm just saying, after that, they mail you a letter yeah. and tell you when you got a report. Okay. They not coming to get you. They ain't coming to look for you. You just need to be where they say... 
at that time. Really? So I got my letter. Yes. I went in, no handcuffs. I was on, in a camp free. Like literally two people like ran off the camp, but I'm not running off. Okay. Yeah. I had a due date. So pretty much it's just free. It's like a dorm. Like wow. literally, you know, you got bunk beds. You just can't go nowhere. Okay. Do you have any access to call people? Yes. You would get 300 at that time. I don't know if they changed it. But when I was locked up, you would have 300 minutes 300 to minutes call people. A day? A day, yes. 300 minutes. So that's no, 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 no. A month. Oh, a month. I'm sorry. Whoa. No, a month. Oh, so you got to be quick because that's five hours, right? No, yeah, I guess when you two minutes here, you used to have to try to learn how to work your minutes. Yeah, you know? five hours. That's not that much for a month. Yeah, and then they had people that had hustles in there. So, you know, of course, um, it's very reasonable. So I would have somebody earn my clothes for $20, wash my clothes for 40 uh, wash my dishes for $10, you know. So you had money in there? Well, no, you don't have money. Like, you literally, uh, I could tell them not because I ain't locked up. <laughs> but literally, I would have somebody send money to the, the actual people that actually did services to me, to their family, and they would oh. deposit the money on their on their books. Interesting. Yeah. So if you have money, it's, it kind of helps you out in there because you could pay for stuff. Let me tell you something. People, I know if somebody called you and been like, can you send me? 700 or 500 dollars in prison you would be like that's a lot of money prison is very expensive really what yeah like before i went in people used to be asking me send the money i'm like for what like you can't <laughs> wrap your head around it but you have commissary you have to pay for emails like you know in the, emails? In the United yeah emails why you have to pay for emails at that time we have video skype uh you know if you want extra food like every week you could go to this place called you know commissary yeah. buy your food uh, they allow you to spend three hundred dollars a month. Mm. So at the end of the day, like that's expensive. Um, you know, being on actual it was called True Links. Being on actual email, it costs you. Oh, it's it, yeah. it's very. And For then some you reason, buy clothes, buy shoes. Wow. Like they had like Timberland boots. What at prison? Yeah, what Timberland. The hell? <laughs> I always just assume like they just gave you everything. I guess. Well, they do. Hold up. When you come, they give you these hard black boots and your feet going to hurt. You're going to oh, have okay. blisters when you get out of there. Yeah. And then they give you, of course, you know, the um, brown pants with the brown shirt. Yeah. But if you want anything extra like jogging, you know, a gray jogging suit, you want T-shirts, you want gym shoes, you know, Timberland boots, then you have to pay for that. Wow. Must have been scary. Can't imagine. <laughs> it's not scary, honestly. It's really? Not. You know what? I was in a camp. I don't know. They, I wasn't in, you know, that there's different levels to federal prison. Right. So I pretty much was in a camp, you know. So what's the difference between a camp and like the maximum security? Prison? Maximum security. You're locked. Sometimes you locked up all day. Yeah. Um, You have bars. You can't move. Oh, you didn't have any bars? Mm -mm. Oh, it, doesn't even it was sound like, like it prison. was like literally a camp is like a whole camp is like with bunk beds. Bro, like, it, it sounds went, like college. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and you know, like they had these little cubes, and we walk in, and I had a bunkie. We had a little desk. Okay. You know, like a bathroom with showers. I mean, no. And it's like at eight o'clock they open the doors, right? And we don't have. We will have count. You know, like early day, and you know, at night three times we have count. And after that is like you, you're free to do whatever you want to do. Wow. Doesn't sound too bad. I guess without electronics, it's a little tough. But you probably got used to it after like a few weeks. Well, we had little electronics. Oh, you. We were something. able to, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. go to the email. Oh, and also we were able to download music. Okay. So what were you? What were you bumping in there? What would I listen to? Uh, I was listening to Drake. Uh, Classic. Yeah, just different, you know, songs, you know, Biggie, you know, stuff like that. All right. Well, what are you working on next, and uh, where can people find you? Oh, what I'm working on next is the tax game. Um, I know what t taxes can do. I know how I can transition people's life. And so that's the next thing. I want to really focus on the tax industry and helping people really develop and understand. Because it's like in the tax industry, you can make the money and you can put it into or diversify it into other vehicles that you want to do mm. to help grow your business and become a serial entrepreneur. Nice. Yeah, I'll put the links in the description for people to check out. Yeah, they need to check it out. I do free master classes. I got one coming up, you know, all the time. So make sure, you know, they go to teachmetotaxgame.com and check it out. Perfect. Where can people message you? Oh, they can actually hang, catch me on Instagram at Annetta Powell. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys next time. See y'all later.